India Davis. I am the artistic director of Topsy Turvy Queer Circus. Um, has anyone here seen the show before? Okay, so yeah. <laughs> A few people. Um, so Topsy Turvy Queer Circus is an interdisciplinary performance arts production, really. Um, it's a big show that happens every year that we work on kind of the whole entire year. Um, and then there's a company of artists um, that are part of the show where we have been an organization for, or for six years, so we're kind of new, um, but have been working with a lot of the same artists uh, throughout the six years that we've been working, um, creating this production. And we also have little projects that happen um, throughout the year um, on top of the big show that happens every year at Brava Theater. Um, Topsy Turvy is an all, it's all queer, most, it's all people of color on stage, um, predominantly black performers um, who do circus arts, vogue, there's also dance, there's um, musicians that are in the show, there's singing in the show, and for the past three years we've had a, a trilogy, a narrative that was um, written by myself. Um, this year also uh, another writer, Indira Allegra, helped with the writing the first year, well wrote the first year, and we wrote uh, the last year um, in tandem, and so um, we have also written a narrative show um, that just culminated this year, so um, that's called Paradise. Uh, so we have our hands on a lot of different mediums and art forms, um, a platform for queer artists of color that practice circus arts, but it's a lot more than, a lot more and a lot different than traditional circus. Um, acrobatic arts, pole dancing, <coughs> clack dancing, vogue, um, so that's about it. And then I, um, I, I also perform in the show and direct the show and have my own practice as an interdisciplinary artist who does a lot of movement-based work, dance. I teach pole classes for queer and trans people of color um, we, on a weekly basis, and that has also been happening for six years now. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Do you tour as well? Yeah. I do. So I'll tour, um, my, I'll tour on my own. Topsy Turvy, the production, has not toured. Mm -hmm. But there's factions of artists within the production who have toured. So we've performed in New York, Toronto, um, around California. And, and yeah, so we're always looking to do more and, and have been able to uh, connect with a lot of artists and also bring artists um, from across the country um, to be a part of the show. Um, so there's not a lot of queer artists of color that are in circus arts, not a lot of black queer artists that are in circus arts, and so we've done a lot of just digging and searching and finding and gathering um, to create this show and the showcase in this platform and community. Thank you. Thank you. So a really good segue into the, the next topic that um, um, I wanted us to talk a little bit about. Um, and that is the challenge of um, you know holding queer space in uh, in our communities now, and what does it mean to create that queer space and maintain that and sustain that? And um, there, are, you know, there are so many forces that seem to distract us from that uh, purpose or to uh, uh, intend to thwart us uh, from our efforts. So I, I'm 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 curious. Um, from, to hear from all of you on you know, the challenges that you are facing in order to um, remain in, in, San, in the San Francisco Bay Area community making, making queer art. What are some of the forces that you're reckoning with? In your world, in terms of the circus and the, the, the climb there, is it as, as challenging to exist in the city as it is for everybody else? Nah. Nah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I mean, okay, so. Uh, thank you both for all that you shared. It's an honor to be here with, with you. Um, as a young person and also as like a young group of people who are making art that is showcased in San Francisco, which is quite an honor um, and also a privilege, we, uh, Topsy Turvy Queer Circus, started through the National Queer Arts Festival. And so that was the platform that, like, that opened up the door for us to be able to make this show and to be in the Brava Theater, which is like, mm -hmm. I mean, we chose that. We were like, where do we go to the Brava Theater? But it's like something that, um, as queer artists, 
a lot, like no other queer artists of color, none of my peers, no other like black queer artists would have access to that kind of space. Mm -hmm. um, such a grand, big space here in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, and I think another thing that I'll say is just, I mean, just talking about challenges is that while our showcase happens in the city, not our, most of our artists don't live in the city. Mm -hmm. I don't live in the city. Mm -hmm. um, I live in Oakland, and that's because it's just like, I couldn't even imagine being able to afford to live in San Francisco. And even in Oakland, it's, it's incredibly expensive. Um, rent is expensive. Just living expenses, but also just in terms of having space to create your work. Um, so throughout the years, we've been very creative in finding spaces for us to get together to train, to make the work um, that we do. And over time, like we've been able to get more resources, more funding so that we have money to pay for things like rehearsal space. But that's actually pretty new just in the last couple of years that we've been able to do that. Um, and so I think that that's like, I, that's like the biggest challenge that came to me when I was like, what is, like what's the challenge? It's really it's space, like space to live, to be, to, to like physical space, like to have access to, to physical space, to buildings, um, housing, whether that be housing or, or just to create within. Um, and then the other challenge, other challenges are just like, of course, getting funding for your work. Um, what hasn't been a challenge for us is to get people to show up to our shows. So I think it speaks a lot to the value and the importance of the work that we're making. Um, and also that, not just the work, but also the community. So it hasn't been a challenge to find people that want to participate. Um, in the work that we're making. So it's definitely necessary and needed, but it's just that there's just, the access is so, is so difficult and so challenging. Um, I would say another thing for us um, is it's a lot of carving out space and a lot of, of figuring out intuitively what it is that we are trying to do. So um, as artists within Topsy Turvy Queer Circus, um, we're a circus arts company, but I don't think that circus is really the, the word to describe what we do. And so, um, as artists, we're acrobats, we are aerialists, we are pole dancers, we are singers, and there's a lot of, there's this, there's this connection to the body and to physical movement that is tied to um, legacies that are beyond what you would think of traditional Western circus. We have circus all over the world. Um, and I, so I think as artists, the reason why we formed, why we came together, is that it was really important for us as artists that we're finding ourselves in these spaces, but not exactly sure why we were there, or, um, or seeing reflections of ourself within those spaces. And so that was quite a drag, um, not fun at all. And so um, in forming our company, it was really trying to find, to create a flat platform where we could come together to express these, these kind of art forms that, um, that are very physical and very surreal and very magical and like grand um, and that are rooted in, that also like have roots in, in, in art forms that are part of my own ancestry, um, if you think about masquerade or even acrobatics. So I think that's another challenge that feels like right now that I'm thinking a lot about within our organization is around like, how do we talk about what we do? And how do we talk about the space that we're creating and curating? So it's really reflecting the intention that we have and who's in it and what we're actually creating. Because if you go to one of our shows, you would probably be surprised as to what you would see. Um, so that's another challenge. Um, and I think, I think maybe I'll, I'll, I'll end it at that. I wanted to take just a little time to talk about the healing forces of the work that we do and sort of how um, that is integrated into the work that, um, that all of you present in your various um, disciplines. Is it a conscious choice? Is it just sort of a natural byproduct? Um, how does that <coughs> manifest itself in terms of healing our, ourselves and our, our community? thoughts about that? Right, so <clears throat> in terms of healing, um, I think that healing for us as an organization is all about the spaces that we create. 
and that and it really is creative because there are spaces that just wouldn't exist otherwise. Mm -hmm. So um, having the intention to create the showcase the way that we have, um, and every year we put more. We, we think about it. We 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 think about like who do we need to have represented in the show like. What do, we, what do we need it to look like? When Topsy Turvy first started, it wasn't all queer people of color. There were, there were white people in the show. Um, and, and a couple years in, we decided that that just wasn't gonna happen anymore because it was really important to have a, a sh production that was all queer people of color specifically and to prioritize um, queer black artists. And in terms of not only who's on stage, but the story that's being told, mm -hmm. the narrative that's being told, the music, the aesthetics, that are being that we're working with, um, and that's because it's it's like well, it's not only just because it doesn't exist anywhere else. I think that we are the only queer circus company, and definitely the only queer of color circus company in, in the United States. Um, but because it's it is joyful to be in that space um, for myself and for the other artists that are there, and so we're creating this experience for ourselves. Um, to, to share with our audiences um, in our performances, but also to share with each other in the creation of the show. So, so the process of creating the show takes, it takes pretty, pretty much the whole year, and we're in rehearsals for about four months intensively together. And the time that we spend in rehearsal is, more, is, is even more important than the show itself. Mm -hmm. And it's and I think what it is is it's carving out this space that we're literally living our lives in. So when you think about like what you spend your time, every day, every hour of your day, you know, we're spending a lot of time in this space, and so we're creating really like our, our own world that we get to live within. And so that that is that's the most important part. That's the most important thing to me in terms of the healing of the work that we do is that we're able to spend time um, together. We're able to create together. We're able to, and, and, it's, and that's really special um, and necessary and makes life worth living. Um, and it's almost like, I mean, there's plenty of choices, but it's almost like we don't have a, any other choice because that is what we do. We are artists, um, we are queer, and we are people of color. And so we have to create these spaces because it's not like walking down the street this is just not the environment. This environment is not necessarily made for us to be in. Um, it's certainly being created yeah, by other people. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. So I would say that, that that's like the that's the most that's like the most wonderful part to me. Um, I would also say the narrative. So talking about the trilogy, the Paradise trilogy of having this narrative show was also a huge and a huge, it was a huge undertaking, because um, it's basically like a musical. Um, but it's so worthwhile, because it's, it's really being able to tap into our, like, our, our, our deep creativity, our, our stories that we're, that, we're had, that we're dealing, like things that we're thinking about and dealing with now, but also like our myths and our legends, and thinking and talking about our ancestry and history, but also like creating this imagine. So it's all of it's very imaginative. So this imaginary imaginary world of paradise, um, and so, and of course, paradise has these you know different um, forces that are um, kind of oppressing the gods of paradise. Everyone in paradise is, is God, and so I think for as queer people and as queer people of color to create this story and to live and create this art within within a story where we are and where everyone is a god and they're like discovering these things about themselves and they have these powers and is also really powerful and healing. And healing, exactly. And and the and the show was created like was created for the people that are a part of the company. So when the story was written I, I thought about like who who are the people that I work with and then mm -hmm. took those people and and turned them into these um, larger than life characters to talk about what's actually going on, like what, what is actually the power of this person that I know, that I love, that I care about, um, so that we can see ourselves and, and celebrate ourselves. So, so again, yeah, for us, it's really about being in the space together, creating that space, carving out that space, and creating an experience for ourselves and for our audience. Um, and using, I know, using, also using our bodies, there's a lot about cellular memory, and it really is real, like, um, 
I would say creating any work, you really tap into a lot of the knowledge.